Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, this is Keith Jamison with the Jamison team at Likely Real Estate. It is Thursday, April 23rd. And uh, we're going to be kicking off an interview series next few weeks, just interviewing a lot of local professionals, uh, local business owners, just to let us know, you know, what the impact of COVID has been on their business, how does uh, things change, and, you know, what they're doing to adapt. And uh, I'm really happy to be kicking off uh, our first interview with Sarah Johnson of PRMG. PRMG stands for Paramount Residential Mortgage Group. I'm going to go with PRMG. I like that more. Um, but Sarah, thank you for jumping on and welcome. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Glad to be here. Absolutely. Sarah's one of um, the lenders that uh, our team uses uh, to you know, help assist our clients. And I thought with everything going on, with rates going all over the place, um, you know, with headlines talking about banks are making things harder or it's tough to get loans or, you know, the delays are going, I, I really wanted to get right to it with you and, uh, you know, hear, hear the truth uh, and not really just everything that is being spun out there. So before we jump into those fun questions, why don't you give us a little background, Sarah? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, again, work with PRMG. We are a big nationwide lender. Uh, we are licensed in 49 out of 56, 50 states. <laughs> and, um, and I'm located right here in Tampa Bay. So I live in Pinellas County. I do a lot of business in um, all over Hillsboro, Pasco, Pinellas. Uh, my office is right here in Tampa. Um, so just happy to help anybody, you know, here in the local Tampa Bay area, Tampa Bay area, but then also, of course, have the ability to service lots of clients throughout the nation as well. I, and I think that's fantastic, especially for um, us locally, like I would love for you to talk to us about like what what maybe is the benefit of like a local lender um, that also has some national power, right? But you know, as opposed to what a lot of us do, and like when I was a first time home buyer, I did was oh okay, I have a bank account at X Y Z big bank, uh, I'll just go there. Like you know, can you talk to us about like maybe what the benefit is of um, working with somebody like PRMG? Absolutely, absolutely. So one of the biggest things that I think is a benefit of working with a local lender is all of my clients and my realtor partners have my personal cell phone. So anybody that has a question or there's maybe, um, you know, in, in real estate, there's always some type of last minute fire or concern or question or, you know, something that can go wrong at 10 o'clock at night. You can pick up the phone and call me or text me anytime, whereas you may not have the ability to do that at some of the big box, you know, banks and things like that. So um, that's a big advantage. But then also just being able to get things done a little bit quicker. Um, you know, here in my Tampa office, we do have an in-house uh, processor. We do have a dedicated underwriter. Um, so it just helps for, in my situation, if I have someone that, you know, maybe is a little bit of a tricky file or maybe there's something that, um, you know, I need to explain to the underwriter, I can pick up the phone and call her or go and have a conversation with her versus, you know, trying to go through several different channels. And, you know, it's just a lot more communication, a little bit easier of a process. And I can baby and nurture those files a little bit easier to get them through to closing without, you know, any hiccups and um, just being as easy of a possible process for people. Yeah, and you know, I think it's a little harder to dodge a phone call when they know that you can just barrel down their door. Right, exactly. <laughs> kind of so, the first question, you know, I want to ask, and I think a ton of people probably are very interested in is, you know, how has COVID really impacted the mortgage industry? I, I know, turn on the news, and uh, it won't be an hour, and you'll hear something about it, yeah. with and, and especially in terms of mortgages. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, and I challenge that to probably even say fifteen minutes. You'll yeah, hear. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, so yeah, there have been quite a few different changes and I know that I did allude to that a little bit, um, but immediately everybody wants to immediately protect the housing market just to make sure because, you know, I know that there's been a lot of fear that, um, you know, oh my gosh, there's going, a, you know, we're going through a pandemic and that's going to lead to a recession and then the housing market's going to crash. Not the case. Um, you know, back in the 2008 times, that was led on from a housing issue. This has nothing to do with housing. So thankfully, um, you know, we're really not as impacted as people would, would think. However, we did put several different safeguards in place to make sure um, that our economy and our housing market, anyway, um, stays, as stable, uh, stays as stable as possible. So some of those things, for example, um, a lot of different loan programs have now increased their minimum credit score requirement. Um, just to make sure that the borrowers are fully eligible and, you know, qualified and, um, 
a more likelihood to make sure that their mortgage payments are paid on time every month. That's the reason for that. Um, and then some of those more risky loan products have kind of gone away or made it harder. Um, for example, uh, if you're looking at some maybe non-traditional financing, like a bank statement loan program or any kind of non-traditional funding, some of those kinds of things have either tightened up um, their restrictions on who can qualify or have just ceased to exist temporarily until things are kind of back to normal. Um, so there are some of those kinds of things going on. Um, and then also too, uh, you know, there's some, there's tons of people right now that are experiencing either a drop in hours or just not working at all, unfortunately. Um, and so one of the things now that every loan has to do is certify um, that you're attesting, you are still working, you are still, you know, getting your full amount of hours. And if you're self-employed, you have to go the first the step further, the businesses that you own, those are still generating money, still working and still operable. Um, so those are just some of the little things that are, are um, just safeguards put in place. So um, uh, as- I think that's, that, that's huge. Now, um, Obviously, the credit score thing is something I, I know I've seen in the news and I think is a huge thing. Like, you know, I, I, I've known some colleagues that have had, you know, like FHA mortgages that had been pre-approved under one guideline by the time it gets to closing, you know, that it's just not going to be backed anymore. Um, are you still experiencing, is there still programs available for somebody that, you know, let's say was on the lower end and, you know, in the end of February would have been able to get a mortgage and now it's April and they had a lender tell them no, is there still options? Right, yeah. So um, previously the minimum credit score to qualify for the FHA three and a half percent down program was 580. Now it has increased to 620 and above. Um, one of the things that I try to do for my clients is look to see you might be at a 600 now, but how can I get you up to that 620? Um, so part of being a, a licensed mortgage lender professional is knowing how to help people with restoring their credit and getting them up to where they need to be uh, to be able to qualify and meet those guidelines and be able to purchase a home for their family. Um, so that's some of the things that, that I'm trying to do is looking at that and giving them guidance on there. Um, but otherwise, yeah, there's a lot of people who um, different lenders actually have even higher minimum qualifying scores. So again, it's one of those, if they're maybe at another lender who now can't go lower than 640, but they're higher than 620, I might be able to help. No, I think that's huge. And I mean, uh, we won't call names. I'll say Blank Bank actually made big headlines that they didn't want to do anything under 700, right? And if you actually look at that, that's you know alienating over half of the nation's credit huge. score. So that's, that's big. Um, so, like, let's talk about too, um, you know, with with rates, which, you know, I, I think that I'm assuming as a mortgage owner, that's the number one thing that you hear from people. Is, What's my rate? What can my rate be? So um, talk to us about like rates, because I know they're, flo they're floating around and why now still may be a good time to buy because of that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So it is the number one question I get all day, every day. Um, so to answer uh, first, the big fear that's out there, everybody thinks, oh no, rates are terrible now because of everything. Not the case. Uh, I will say in the very beginning weeks, um, rates did go up and there was a little bit of a shock because some people that were you know, pre-qualified at this ultra low rate, then it went up. Thankfully, thankfully, we are much, much lower now. So, and even I would say pretty close to on par with where we were when we first started before all of this happened. So um, lots of people still able to get really, really phenomenal rates. I will say it depends on what your loan scenario is. Mm -hmm. um, some of the things that make a big impact on what kind of a rate you can qualify for are your credit score, um, your loan to value, so how much money you're putting down, uh, the type of program that you're qualifying for, the type of property that you're purchasing, um, and then also how much of your, your debt to income ratio, so how much mortgage are you trying to get compared to how much income you have? All of those things can play a factor. So as you're hearing things out there that might say, oh, I have X you know, rate available, well, that could depend on your unique situation. Right. Or even that billboard, or even that billboard that says rates as low as, you know, sometimes right. that's doesn't exactly. tell the whole story. Right. Um, car where you can get a Mercedes for, uh, you know, a uh, zero percent interest, right. but we're super well qualified but, buyers. <laughs> but, but then you go and they're like, so for you, I have a great deal, seven percent. Where can you sign? <laughs> awesome part about mortgage rates is that 
there's a very little variance. So, you know, maybe somebody that has all of the best scenarios might get like a three and a half percent, but then someone at the worst case scenarios might get a four and a half percent or something. So it's very, very minimal indifference as far as rates go. Um, and as far as the local lenders compared to the big banks, this is all we do. So one of the things that you know banks focus on is checking accounts, savings accounts, and bonds, and all those kinds of things that they offer. Um, whereas I at PRMG and other local lenders, 100% only offer mortgages. So we're super, super competitive in that space. So that is another reason why it may be advantageous to use a local lender as well. Yeah, and I mean that that's a big reason that you know, you know, personally in our history we've always used you know a local lender. Um, for our own mortgages and then you know why we really tell our clients like look like you can go anywhere but um we really want you to at least talk to somebody local so you can get an idea of you know hey here's your big bank that you've had a checking account of for a decade great listen to what they have to say but you know also listen here and, and you tell us what you feel most comfortable with at the end um yeah. so how to that um, thing i will say one other thing that i have heard in the news from some of these other lenders uh, at the bigger banks is turn times right now are crazy, crazy, especially even I saw for refinance now at some places they're taking several months to be able to get that to process. Whereas we're still operating standard 30 days. On yeah, most and, and, and I actually wasn't even mentioning, we talked to it beforehand, but I mean, I personally have a file that I think is an a great example. Um, it is outside the state and um, we had to get an extension not because of anything to do with the real estate file, the borrower or anything, but because they weren't able to get a hold of an appraiser because they didn't do loans in this area very often. And obviously with COVID, you know, some appraisers are changing their business. Not all of them are going to want to go rambling right into an owner occupied home. The owner might not want that or the appraiser himself himself or herself might not feel comfortable so things are changing and the extension happened because of that and uh you know as a realtor we we normally are in charge of uh providing appraiser information that's normally on your end but you know personally i had to find uh find some people that would do it for them so again you know when we stress locality um especially in these times i think it's that much more important yeah absolutely yeah so you you hit actually briefly on my next two questions. I would love to entertain. So so one, talk to me about like with PRMG, you can and then just otherwise, but have you all slowed down in terms of your turn time? You know, the 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 golden rule has always been 30 days, right? We want to close, but I mean, are you guys still hitting that, struggling? What what what's the deal there? Yeah, absolutely. So uh one of the things that we're I mean, we always strive to meet the the contract guidelines or of course faster <laughs> that's always the goal <laughs> um, so absolutely we're still we're still knocking it out of the park and still doing business as usual for the most part um, the only thing that I have encount encountered every once in a while is um, like you said maybe the appraiser or the inspection or something is taking a little bit longer um, but other than that um, you know still business as usual for the most part and, and that's something where you know a team you know like a realtor staying on top of it, a mortgage person staying on top of it, we can communicate that to you right away. Like, hey, here's the hold up, here's how we have to fix it. Um, versus that uh, we joked about at the beginning where you can't get your processor to call you back and didn't find out that it was because they couldn't get an appraiser, right? We wanna know that right away. Um, the other thing, so we also did mention refinancing. We mentioned that rates have kind of gone all over the place. Is now still a time to uh, consider a refinance? Absolutely. Absolutely. So right before all this happened, um, I was putting it out there all over the place that it was such a good time to refinance. And then things kind of halted for a minute, you know, when we had that little bit of a spike. Now going right back to that, it's still a really good time to refinance because a lot of people say they bought even just a year or two ago. Um, their rate is most likely somewhere in the high fours or fives even. Um, and if you're in the 5% range, 100% definitely need to talk to me about refinancing. Um, high fours, still absolutely still a great time to refinance because most likely on refinances, I can probably get you uh, a full point lower than where you're at, or at least 
you know, um, somewhere pretty close to there. Um, so definitely give me a call about that situation because uh, again, everybody's situation is different. How much equity you have in your home uh, does definitely play a big part in it. But you know, that's a big thing too. Home values have continued to rise over the last few years, especially here in the Tampa Bay area. Um, so if you bought only, you know, a year or two ago, you might be sitting on thousands of dollars of additional equity um, that you can use to help reduce or completely eliminate your PMI, um, just reduce your rate or, you know, even take cash out of some of that equity. Yeah. And I think, um, do you mind just, just for someone that's maybe newer, just explaining like PMI and like why that's such yeah. a thing that if we can get rid of it or get out of it, like we want to do that? Absolutely. So um, PMI stands for private mortgage insurance. Um, and so anytime you put down less than 20% on a conventional loan, you're going to have PMI. It's there to protect the lender because your out-of-pocket is so minimal. Um, but once your home reaches that um, value to where your loan amount compared to what the value of the home is, is at 80% or less, um, then we can remove that. And oftentimes PMI is hundreds of dollars. So you can save that just off the top, even if you had the exact same rate, you know, and just being able to remove that can save lots of money. Yeah. And it's a complete sunk cost. It's not adding to your equity. It's not improving your home at all. It's literally going to protect the lender, which, Hey, thank you lender for providing right. the loan or we wouldn't be able to buy the loan or buy the home anyways. So we're not here to completely bash the mortgage, but you know, it's there to protect them. And so the moment that we can get rid of it, like let's, let's get out of there and let's put that hundred, hundred and twenty dollars towards something better. And that's, you know, I'm glad that you mentioned that too, because it's, it's definitely not like a, Oh, you know, you terrible lender causing this mortgage insurance. The benefit is it allows you as a home buyer to get in with paying three or 5% down instead of having to come up with 20% down. Like you may have had to, you know, decades ago. Um, that's just not the case anymore. You can get into a home with as little as 3% down now. Right. A $200,000 house having to come up with 40,000. Like a lot of us can't do that, especially right now. Like I, I, I don't know any of my clients, you know, especially more on the first time buyer or, you know, really still building up that want to put 40,000 down when, you know, you know, we're, we're constantly worried, you know, or do we have a job next week or all those things. So even if you, do, you may not want to, because maybe right. it's nice to have that emergency fund instead of tying it all up into your mortgage. You know? Yeah. Maybe you want to improve the home or all those things, all the things you could do versus that. I can't agree more. Um, finally, like one of the last questions I would love to just go over is um, the big mistakes that you see consumers do. I, I think a lot of us, if you know, you Google it, there's the 10 commandments of, uh, of mortgages, but like, what is the thing that you see people do the most often that kind of, you know, shoots themselves in the foot? Yes. So um, one of the things that I actually do when anybody comes to me for pre-approval, I send them kind of like a 10 commandments of, of a long do's and do nots. Um, so one, well, some common misconceptions and then some, some tips here. So common misconceptions, obviously you don't have to have 20% down. You can get it in for a lot less than that. Um, and then as far as minimum credit score requirements, everybody thinks you have to have this, you know, 700 plus credit score, not, not necessarily, you know, you can get in as low as 620 right now. Um, but then now as far as some of those do's and do nots, uh, do not quit your job. <laughs> you know, if you're, if you're looking at possibly buying a, a home this year, don't quit your job. Uh, if you are changing um, to another, maybe a higher paying job, but it's in the same field, that's okay. We're just looking at stability and likelihood for your income to continue. Um, but now if you're going, you know, from one career to a totally different industry and, and now it's going to be commission based, or maybe you're self-employed and you're going to start a new business. Those are all things that to a lender is like, oh, maybe I need to see this history for a little while, you know, just to make sure that that's going to work out. Um, so try to stay in your job. And if you are considering a change, talk to a mortgage professional so that we can give you better guidance as to whether that's going to help or hurt you. Um, and then the other thing I would say, um, <laughs> don't go and take out new credit. Don't, uh, you know, don't go and have your credit ran by anybody for anything really. Um, and most importantly, when you're under contract along that lines of credit, don't go finance new furniture or buy a new car or anything like that until your loan is done. <laughs> that, that couch is going to look so good in the house. Right? 
wait until you've closed and then go buy it. <laughs> and I, I'll tell you, and I don't know if you agree with this, the, the one that I have seen that I love the most is um, before you do anything once you're under contract, call your mortgage first. Oh, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> like, is, you know, and one of the biggest things that like, I don't know, drives me nuts <laughs> is, is um, a lot of cash deposits or transfers in say, well, my mom was going to help me with, uh, you know, this down payment. She just transferred me $5,000. Okay, well, great. Well, now I need to see that that money really did come from mom. Um, and I need to sign her, you know, have her sign a, an attestation letter that, yes, I'm giving this money. It's not a loan. Right. You know, uh, probably even going to need to see mom's bank statement now to make sure she had the funds to give. You know, so those are little things that people, you know, may just not even think twice about. Um, but it is going to be a concern for the lender. So we're going to have to source any kind of deposits that are not from payroll. But obviously, if that's going to happen, call you ahead of time, and then you can kind of guide them on like what's going to be the easiest yeah. way to do this. Exactly. We're not saying mom, like moms out there, thank you for helping us. Yeah. But uh, we're not saying not to help, but like let us, let it, let you know, let your realtor know so we can facilitate that easier so you you know, a week later, don't go, man, Sarah's asking for all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And because if I know that those kinds of things are coming, I can prepare you on the best way to do it, uh, the best documentation that we'll need and make sure that, you know, it's just as, as smooth and easy as possible. And that's what, going back to the beginning of what makes it different is, you know, um, just trying to make sure that your loan process is as smooth and painless and easy as possible so that you can meet all of your guidelines uh, according to the contracts. So you, you're not having to ask for an extension for anything. We're able to just get it knocked out before uh, before those deadlines. Yeah, and get you in the home, your dream home when you want to be there. Um, yes. So I think that's a phenomenal um, spot to end. Sarah, I can't thank you enough for your time. So. Um, I'm gonna make sure that I have all of your information on all of our posts, but can you just quickly tell us like what, what's the best way to reach out to you, all that good stuff. Absolutely, thank you. Um, so the easiest way to find out if you qualify for a mortgage is to fill out the application online. Uh, my online application will be found at www.mlosara.com. So that's M-L-O, like mortgage loan originator, and then Sarah, S-A-R-A-H. Otherwise, and give me a call as well at 727-424-5533. Well, thank you so much for your time. Everybody, I can't stress enough. Um, if you're looking, make sure Sarah is one of those people that you uh, give a call and just uh, and make sure that you, uh, you know, take care of these things. Um, it's a scary time. We, we fully realize that and, and things are constantly changing but it still is a great time to um, look out there. So if you are in the market to buy a home, please don't let this be a reason not to um, go out and look. Um, give us a call, get informed, um, and, let's, and let's help your dreams come true. So thank you so much. Once again, I'm Keith Jamison with the Jamison Keep My Likely Real Estate, and we're opening the door to your next home. Take care. Thank you. Bye.